Boom. Peace. Intro. What's up, guys? The cars. Oh, got me some power. Got me some lotto tickets. I wish I could win. Man. Got them in my way. I grabbed them. I usually only buy a few. I mean, I know you can't win, but you definitely can't win if you don't play. Anyway, <clears throat> I finished up a custom for Mr. Whole Lot of Zep. And I figure I'll show it. He already kind of knows what it is. Don't know what it looks like. Oh, and yeah, my last video, I was talking about Chirpy. I guess people said it was chirping the whole time. I replayed my video, and yeah, I guess it was, but I just didn't notice it. But um, actually, did you guys notice it was a different chirp? It wasn't near as loud, I should say. Well, I right through that door you see open, that way is a little entryway, like a mud room. Then there's a door to the garage. There's stairs that go up to the, you know, upstairs. There's a closet there to put your coats and all. Right there is where Chirpy is. Well, that's the one I took care of. Well, on the other side of that door, there's another door that goes into a room. Um, it's actually like a downstairs fourth bedroom, but my wife has turned it into a sewing room. Well, yeah, there's a smoke detector right there. That's the one that was chirping. That's why it wasn't as loud. It's because it was on the other end of that door. And I was like, are you kidding me? How can that be? And uh, ain't that something, though? Just take care of one and the other one goes off. So, I mean, whatever. Um, but that's what it was. So unfortunately, those that got hooked on Chirpy, Chirpy is no longer there. Um, it's taken care of. But that's what I was telling you guys. I have smoke detectors all through this place. So one of them, you know, not functioning is nothing. Not a big deal. But anyway, here is the Chevelle I made for a whole lot of Zep. I hope he likes it. And I had to tuck some meat under it. So when I say I lowered it, I guess what I should say is I, I had to do a lot of work to get that meat tucked in there. Of course, I did some, you know, the usual stuff on the inside. Put a tack on the dash. And uh, let's see if we can see some meat under there. Eh, kind of. Again, I took the wheels off of that Mercury. They just work great on these things. If you want to tuck some meat under there, that's the one. And uh, put an engine in it. This time I did use my and my new saw. Works excellent. And uh, tucked an engine down in there. I, I agree, Mr. Eddie from Simple Customs. It does look better like that. But, I mean, I just, it, to me, it looked fine the other way because of the, I mean, on top, you know, just because of what it is. But this does look better. I agree. And I just didn't have a saw, but I went ahead and got one. It works great. And uh, so hopefully Mr. Zepp likes that. I wonder if you guys can tell me what that engine come out of. I'll go ahead and let you guys guess. I'm sure some of you will figure it out. But did the dash. And the bottom, you see I got exhaust coming out the side right there. But I also got exhaust coming out the back. Because I did what we did in the, like back in the 70s, you'd put dumps. And of course nowadays they got solenoid. You can hit a switch and it just opens and it dumps out the side. But we used to use like a, a Hirsch lever and a shifter and it would be flanged into your header and so when you pushed it forward it would just drop your dual exhaust down about four inches 
and it would come out of the flange and the gasket and boom, you were instantly running instant open headers. And then to, to lock it back in, you just pulled the, the hearse shifter back inside the car to the lock position and it would raise your exhaust right back up, boom, into those flanges. And uh, I admit, after a few times, you know, your gaskets didn't seal that well anymore. But when you were hitting down the road, messing around all the time, you didn't care. You was opening it up all the time. And uh, But anyway, so that's what I kind of did under there. I, I tied exhaust into it and kicked it out the side, but still left the other exhaust going to the back. So it kind of simulated that, you know. I don't know. Otherwise, you know... Otherwise, because I wanted the exhaust to kick out the side like that. And um, so I would have had to leave the rest of the exhaust. And to get these wheels in there, I was going to have to grind that whole rear end down. But as you see, I got it just barely where they'll clear. They just barely clear that rear end. Because I didn't want to grind all that off and make it look unpresentable. But I did, it's, it's hard to explain. It's not so much lower. Here, here you go. There's the Fast and Furious. So, as you see, it is lowered a little bit, but it doesn't look it because of the meat I got in there. In other words, if you were to take these back off and stick the regular wheels back on there, or even some of these that aren't so beefy, it would be lowered. It would, it would go way down. But... It is a little lower, but it's it's probably about the same. It's probably sitting about the same. But it's because I, I put the big beef back in it, which is in before, before you tuck it in there, it's up real high with that. I mean, it's probably sitting, it was probably sitting that high before uh, I tucked the wheels up in there. And just, you know, it just didn't look right. And it takes a lot of work to get that tucked up in there. I mean, you had to do a lot of trimming. But try to still keep it presentable, if you know what I mean. Even had to uh, file down the wheel wells. Because they are thick. I don't know, you can't really see up in there. You can kind of see it. See how thick that wheel well is? On the top right there. I mean, it is thick. Well, I had to, I had to die grind those down. There you go. I had to die grind it down at a radius. And uh, I just, I didn't want to go any more than I had to. But this thing rolls like a champ. Which I, again, took forever to get that baby to do that. Got a nice bottle mounted in the back. I had to tub it, so I had to put a plate on the back seat. Covering up the back seat. No longer does it have a back seat. I guess you can't really see in there. That's where the nice bottle is mounted, is on that plate. Throw my hicker, hooker sticker in the back window. I just like clear glass. You could really see in there. Let's see if I can get. Done the dash. Some gauges. Of course, big rat pink eight ball shifter. Now he wanted certain decals on there and I don't have them and I couldn't get them. He wanted demon eater. Which is a good name, good sound. Demon Eater would be cool, but uh, I I don't have anywhere to get them. I don't make my own decals. He thought I did, but uh, I think these look killer on there. I mean, that looks great to me. Hopefully he likes it. He did say I could do some rat fink to it, but I think if I could have got a nice little Demon Eater, put it right across the back here, that would have looked cool. There we go, maybe through the window. There you go. You can see through the window I got the NOS bottle hooked to the to the back plate. There you go. There's the plate I had to stick down in there. Cover up the back seats. 
has a Pennzoil sticker on it. And so on. There it goes. Anyway, let's see if we can get some. There you go. Again, I couldn't find any flaws. I looked. Maybe you guys see some, but I don't see any. Ooh. So anyway, I hope you like it, buddy. I hope uh, it looks better than what you had. And I hope it's worthy of sitting in your collection. Um, now, I did show you a picture of what I wanted to copy, and I did make a wing for the back. But however, I did not put it on because I started feeling like it was taken away from the car. It wasn't. There we go. It didn't look good enough. Um, I don't know. I just didn't like it, so I didn't put it on. But that was going to go on the back there. And as you see, I, I think it's because I didn't do a good enough job making it. It's very small. And I'm kind of picky. So if you look right here, you can see. Let me get where I can put There we go. See how you can see some glue lines over there? And kind of on the side right there. Yeah, I don't like that. That side real bad. Now, I thought, well, I could sand those sides down nice and smooth and repaint it. But I don't like that glue line in there. I don't know. I just don't. I just didn't think I liked the way it came out. So I didn't put it on, buddy. Um, maybe I'll throw it in the box with you. And if you want to put it on, you can. But I... I just think it takes away from the car. Let me try to hold it up there again. All right. Forge. So, I left it off. And I did throw you a parachute on the back. So, there we go, guys. Um, hope you like it. Hope it's cool and all. Hope Mr. Whole Lot of Zep likes it. And uh, there's a few reasons why. I, a lot of times I'll send the car off before I show a video to a guy, but that's usually just depends if it's a super surprise or not. But, uh, this isn't really a surprise. It's a surprise what it's going to look like, but he already knew what he wanted. So basically, I'll just do the video and see what he says about it, just in case. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Um, and again, it wasn't, it didn't start out the Fast and Furious. It started out some other car. Uh, like I showed you in my last video, this thing. From whatever year that was. One of five. Um, I guess it'll say on there somewhere. 06, so I guess that's 07. But it was black with red interior. I, I changed it to a tan interior because tan interior is what I always do. I don't know why I'm hooked on it. But I did give him some black bucket seats. And, uh, and he wanted a midnight blue. And that's another thing let me mention. Um, this is the darkest blue I had. And I can't, let me see if I turn this light off. I don't know, maybe if I turned off more light. It almost looks black. If you don't have it under some direct light and you set it off to the side, it almost looks black. And uh, 
like I told him, I didn't have any midnight blue. This is all I really had. And he had a great idea. And uh, I've actually done that on other cars uh, to, to get me a darker color. Or I'll use a white to get me a lighter color underneath it. And he suggested, well, paint, some, paint it black and then paint the midnight blue over it. So I did. I shot it with some flat black. And then I, I, I done this blue lightly over it. And it just kind of faded it into a black. I mean, it when you get right up on it with light, you can see all the metal flake in it. And it looks blue. But like I said, when I'll set it on my shelf over there, and then I'll ask my son or somebody, hey, what color is that car? He'll be, is it black? It's like, no, nah, go look at it. Walk over on it. It's not black. So that was, ex that was a good idea, Zep. Worked out good, I think. I think you might like it. I don't know. But yeah, that was a good idea. Because it's basically that blue. It is. It's that blue. That's the exact blue I used. But when I shot the black underneath it, it went to more of a midnight. Now, anyway, excellent idea, buddy. I don't know why I didn't even think about it. I've done it on other cars that I use uh, to get it a little darker. Um, the, uh, I have purples I use. And uh, sometimes I shoot black under it to make it a little darker. And uh, sometimes you can shoot white under it to make it a little brighter. So I did, just didn't even cross my mind to do that. But uh, yeah, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. It was pretty cool. And uh, so anyway, let me know what you think, buddy. I hope it stands. It's, it's, I hope it meets your approval and was what you was expecting. But I got some other ones I'm still working on. I just finished this one first, so. Y'all take it easy. Again, sorry for rambling. Hope you guys didn't miss Chirpy too much. Y'all take it easy. Peace. Outro.